Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to use aluminum sulfate to morden some fiber for natural dyeing for the first time. Yesterday I ran around the neighborhood trying to find dandelion blossoms and I put them in this plastic bag in the fridge overnight so I wanted to see how much I was able to gather. If I had done this maybe two weeks ago, I think I could have found a lot more. And it sort of hurt me that the neighborhood mowed the big field the afternoon before I went on my gathering adventure. But I have about 45 grams of the dandelion matter here, which is about 1.61 ounces. This is not a lot. Even with mordant, I'm not expecting to get a lot of color. But uh, let's let this video be a lot more about mordanting the fabric, and we'll see what, if anything, we can get with this dandelion. In preparation for this and other projects, I am going to go and mordant on two skeins of Nitpicks Swish Decay, 200 gram skeins of Nitpicks Wool of the Andy Worsted, and five 20 gram mini skeins from Wool to Die For that are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I will be using one of these mini Mordenton mini skeins today to play with the dandelion. But uh, since I am going to deal with 500 grams of fiber, we've got some other projects on the docket. I figured it would be easier to submerge the fiber into the Mordenton bath if I were to uh, pre-soak them in some water first. So right now it's just soaking in plain tap water. Commercial acid dyes are constructed so that way they can bind to the wool as it is. But there are a lot of beautiful colored pigments in nature that don't readily bind to yarn. And so by adding the mordant, which are usually some kind of metal salt, onto the yarn first in the mordanting process, you can then get richer, more intense colors on your yarn. I, you can find, I think, alum powder in the spice section. And this is something that is sometimes used in canning and I'm assuming in much smaller amounts than what we would use for dyeing. Uh, this <laughs> aluminum sulfate is definitely not food grade and I am gonna be using dedicated dye equipment and I will be wearing personal safety equipment when I'm dealing with any of the powders uh, and when I'm handling the mordanted yarns. I will be wearing gloves uh, so that way it doesn't irritate my skin and I'll be wearing a face mask while I am measuring and mixing the powder. For my mordanting protocol, I'm gonna use the instructions from Earth Hues Botanical Dye Kit, um, which says that we want to have about 20% of the weight of fiber. So with 500 grams of fiber, I'm gonna want about 100 grams of our aluminum sulfate. Uh, this is slightly more than one pound. So I think that when we go outside, I'm gonna weigh out five and a half tablespoons and see exactly how much that weighs, just for our reference. So I've already pre-soaked our fiber for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go measure out the alum. Then I'm gonna dissolve it in some boiling water using our portable uh, electric hot plate and my dedicated dye pot outside. And then I'm gonna fill it up with more warm water so we have enough to cover all of our yarn. Then we're gonna add the yarn to the mordant bath and let it sort of simmer, um, will be just low, below simmer for about 45 minutes. I moved my dye pot outside and I'm on my electric hot plate. I have filled it with just a couple inches of warm water so we can start heating it up so that way we're ready to add the alum as soon as we were near a boil. This thing takes a while to heat up, especially with these big pots, but we will see. One big reason for being outside is a space constraint. Also, sometimes when you are simmering natural dyes, it doesn't necessarily smell very good, and so it's just easier to do it outside where it's well ventilated, plus it's an additional burner. I know that some people will use alum mordanted yarn inside. I think that I just read one article once that talked about doing it outside, and I decided that that's the best way to go for me. But I'm now wearing a dust mask, not my respirator, just a dust mask, and I've got my scale and 
a non-food tablespoon. So let's see. It's a little clumpy, but I'm going to go with it. So one tablespoon is about 19 grams. So it looks like that the estimate of four and a half tablespoons for one pound of, pound of fiber is pretty accurate. So that's about three, four, and I'm going to add a fifth. Actually, I'm going to go all the way up to 100 grams, but this is a heaping fifth. And add a little more. So we will have, eh, I have a feeling that close, okay, that's pretty close. I'm going to go with that. I've got about 100 grams measured, and now let's go dissolve it in our pot. We are not quite at a boil yet, but there's no question that it is hot. I am going to pour in the alum without breaking up the chunks with my hands, mainly because I want to see how easily this will dissolve. We may need to wait for it to fully come up to a boil. Actually, that's dissolving really well. The pot is stainless steel and my spoon is stainless steel as well. You want non-reactive stuff so an enamel pot or something would work well. Also. And that actually is completely dissolved. That is not bad at all. All right, we successfully dissolved our 100 grams of water. Now we need to add our yarn and add enough warm water to cover it. I brought out my second pot filled with warm tap water and I put my pre-soaked yarn in there and I'm going to place that in and add some more of this warm tap water. Uh, this might be too much water, I am not sure. It certainly will take a really long time to heat up. but. There we go. I'm going to leave this here and check back in 20 minutes. Technically, it doesn't need to get to a boil. I think for wool, we wanted it about 200 degrees, but I don't have a thermometer. So we are going to give this our best guess. After well over an hour, maybe close to two, we're pro finally at 190, maybe 195 degrees Fahrenheit. 200 degrees is the target, but I'm going to start the official hour of cooking now. It might get a little warmer than 200 because I'm still on high heat, but I will check in periodically off camera uh, just to make sure we don't get to a hard boil or something like that. I am leaving it covered in between the temperature checks. While we are waiting for the morning to finish up, uh, let's get started with our color extraction. Um, and again, there's not a lot of dandelions. There is some greens in there. I'm only going to dye tw a 20 gram mini skein. Well, I guess I two 20 gram mini skeins. I'm going to do one that I put through the mordant and one that I didn't. But yeah, I wish I had more. So the results may be completely overwhelming, but hey, at least I used an alum mordant for the first time. Let's start with four cups of water. Mm, that's probably pretty good and should heat up relatively quickly unlike our other fiber. I probably could try chopping this up or something but we're just gonna go for it and see what we can get. I've checked on it a few times. I did reduce the heat to more medium uh, so that way we would stay around 200 degrees. But now that it's been an hour, I am going to remove this pot and just set it aside so it can cool. And immediately, we are going to put on and increase the temperature back up. But here is our dandelion. And I'm going to try to bring this to a simmer and then we're going to let it cook for 
about an hour or so. Uh, we're going to want it to cook and then cool down so that way I can divide the liquid up into two containers. But it's going to take a long time for our yarn to cool anyway. So even if this takes a while to heat up, that's not a problem. One hour of simmering and I think we've extracted a lot of color. Uh, the water is like a nice golden yellow color. Could we get more? Maybe. I'm not sure. But I am going to remove this. Well, first I'm going to turn off my hot plate and I'm going to remove this from the heat so it can cool off. Uh, I want this to cool down enough so that way I can measure it and then divide it into two mason jars. Uh, and we'll put half of the liquid in one jar, half of the liquid in the other, and we'll add a mini skein that had the mordant in one and a mini skein that was just pre-soaked in plain tap water. It's already soaking in the other. And then we'll create a little double boiler to try to absorb the color from our dandelions. It has been over an hour since I removed this from the heat and it is still way too hot for me to comfortably handle. Way, way, way too hot. So what I think I'm gonna do is try to remove some of the yarn and hang it over the sides of this pot, maybe just on the grass or something. Um, so that way the yarn can start to cool a little bit, so that way we can um, be ready to dye our yarn. Now, there are a few different ways people talk about um, proceeding. Some people will dye directly in the same water. Some people will uh, use the yarn directly, and other people will rinse the yarn before proceeding. I think I am going to try to drain and remove the liquid. Um, and then I will pour out what's left in the pot down the drain in my kitchen sink. Aluminum sulfate is safe to dispose of. Uh, it's Again, it's something that is found in the spice aisle, but you don't want to dump it directly into like a sewer drain or something like that. I'm not sure if I even mentioned my awesome nylon zip ties. These are great for helping to hold on to yarn or fiber um, in a nice way. And it's still a little too hot for me to wring by hand, but I think that this is working pretty well. So I'm gonna drain off the majority of the liquid, just sort of hang it over the side of my multi-pot. There we go. Now this yarn should be able to cool until I can comfortably handle it. Normally I place hot yarn inside an aluminum pan, but you want to use non-reactive pans uh, for natural dyeing and dyeing with mordants, so I decided to hang it on the stainless steel pasta insert. I think that you might be able to use this one more time uh, to mordant some more fiber, but I think that 500 grams is enough for today. I brought the mini skein that did not have any mordant on it uh, out here so that way it could warm up to I guess outside temperature um, and so I have one jar with yes for yes mordant and one no with no mordant and they should be similar temperature. Now I need to try to filter out uh, most of our dandelion matter and I think I'm going to set this aside or go over to the grass and sort of just scoop out and fling the dandelions onto my grass. I scooped a lot out and now I am going to attempt to pour carefully the rest through, trying not to get those dandelions, but some plant matter ends up in there, then so be it. enough that I can use my hand a little bit. There we go. Okay. We've got about three cups of our dandelion soup. And 
now I'm going to attempt to pour equal amounts into each of these jars, uh, roughly. Since one dandelion went in one, I'm going to put one in the other. Okay. It's roughly even with the same amount of dandelion extract in each jar. I'm realizing that I should have added some kind of tie onto one of the skeins so I could tell them apart when it comes time for washing. But for now, I am going to go get a double boiler set up so that way we can heat set this. I also want to add that in my past experiments of dyeing with uh, natural fibers without using any mordants. I found that a superwash blend like this one absorbed the color the most. So we might not see a huge difference since I didn't have a lot of material to extract from. So if this doesn't give us brilliant results, we have more mordanted fiber to play around with uh, later this afternoon. I would be comfortable doing this part inside now, but I figure I started outside, I just may as well finish it outside. Uh, I have just turned my hot plate back on and I'm using my pasta insert to set up a double boiler. This way we can heat our yarn to hopefully absorb some of that dandelion color. Um, I started the pot with some warm tap water, but obviously I have my hot plate on now. I'm going to go grab a little more water so I can fill it up to be level with the jars. I think today is going to be in the 80s. It's going to be really, really hot. Um, I grabbed some warm tap water from my dye pot that I had cleaned. And I think that that's perfect. There's enough water there that it will not, the jars won't start floating. But yeah. I'll keep checking on it and we'll see what happens. About 40 minutes into heating, I am now starting to see some bubbles in the water bath. It looks like there is a little difference between the two jars. The one on the left is with the mordant, the one on the right is without. The sun came back out. <laughs> uh, we'll see how this goes as time goes on. But I'm now going to leave this on the heat for an hour and then we'll come back. It has been an hour, and so I'm gonna turn off the heat completely, and let's take a little look. I think qualitatively, I see a difference where one looks more green, the other might look a little more yellow. Uh, time will tell, but we do need to let this cool. Um, so I'm gonna take it off the hot plate. This one had the mordant, this one did not. How hot is that? It's a little hot. It looks like we maybe potentially got clearing. Again, I'm not sure how extreme the difference is, but it does qualitatively, I mean, I guess the results are always going to be qualitative, but there might be a visible difference between the two, at least how they look in the pot right now. I'm going to stick the cover back on and let this cool down slowly. Um, I imagine that you know, it'll take a while, but I'm going to leave it until I can comfortably remove the jars with my hands. Uh, this way, if there's any more color to absorb, maybe we'll absorb it. Uh, if these are the results that we got, I'm really happy considering we had very little plant material to start with. Alright, let's see. It's still pretty warm, but I can remove them. So that has the mordant, and this one does not. My markings barely stayed on, but they are definitely there. I am not sure if this difference will be apparent after we wash them, but my first impression looking at these jars, the yarn with no mordant looks a bit muddier. The color looks more brown, where I see more yellow or green on the one that did have mordant on the left. Let's take them inside and remove the yarn and take a closer look. I suppose we're at the moment of truth 
for our yarns. Here's the one with no mordant. Okay, here's no mordant. I'm putting an extra knot in that tie. So there's two knots. Okay, I put an extra knot in the tie. So there's two knots in the one with no mordant. And then here is the one with the mordant. And pop it. Oh dear. Pop it in. So I'm trying to see if I can tell a difference between the two jars. The one with mordant looks slightly less brown than the one with no mordant. And let's look at our yarns. Clearly we're going to need to go to the sink and do a lot of washing. There's a lot of vegetable matter in here, but I will be interested to see how much washes out because the way it stands right now we have with mordant without. And so squeeze out all the liquid. Yeah, I mean one looks like a pale yellow, the other looks like a pale brown. Um, but let's go wash them. If I were washing them separately, then maybe I would be able to see a difference with the bleeding. The nice thing is that the you know, extra dandelion stuff is coming off um, pretty nicely. Well, there's one big chunk there. But you can definitely see that there is a lot of bleeding on both of them. Okay, I'm going to add some clear dip soap. And I'm doing my best to like, not let these get super tangled. I think they're rent as the rinsing goes on, like one of them is definitely more beige and the other one is more of a really nice pale yellow. Um, certainly, I've gotten a lot of beiges, but I haven't gotten like a neat little yellow like that yet. So, I am happy. I am really, really happy. Uh, and still some vegetation, but the water is clearing pretty quickly. I mean, it's not a lot of yarn, and I didn't have a ton of stuff in there to begin with. Alright, I'm going to keep rinsing these and then I will put them through my spin dryer, hang them up to dry, and we'll see what they look like dry. I might have missed peak dandelion season by a few weeks, but we still got a really awesome pastel yellow on yarn. Uh, I had so much fun. Uh, playing around with mordants for the first time. The yarn texture on both of them feels great. Um, again, this is the Platinum DK yarn from Wool to Die For that is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I treated our more yellow skein in an alum mordant before combining these with some color that I extracted from some dandelion heads that I collected around the neighborhood. I did not rinse our mordanted yarn before combining them uh, with the dandelion color. I was just curious to see what would happen. The Earth Hue's instructions didn't indicate washing the fiber first. I think going forward I would wash the fiber in advance, but the mordant gave us a much clearer color. This tan that we have feels a little more muddied. Now this is the first time I've played with dandelions. I'm not sure if it's pH sensitive. Um, I think that there probably was a pH difference between the two jars. There's a lot of questions and a lot of variables. But at first glance, I really like this yellow that we got. And I'm really excited for next summer when I will try to collect a lot more of this color. As for the rest of the fiber that we treated with alum, 
uh, stay tuned because over the next few weeks there will be more videos featuring avocado, black beans, weld, logwood, and a couple other extracts that I have on hand. Make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss any of these videos. And go ahead and let me know in the comments what other kinds of natural dyes you'd like to see me play with. This is still a new journey to me. I, even though I've played with a lot of things with no mordants, I have a lot of questions and there are a lot of things I want to explore. Now, granted, these things that I'm exploring and discovering, I'm exploring and discovering them for myself. There are some incredible books out there on natural dyeing and how to achieve specific colors, uh, but I tend to learn through more hands-on methods, and so I like to gather things and give it a shot. And so that's one of the ways that I learn, and when I make mistakes, I think that we can all learn together. So if you appreciate this, uh, don't forget to also give this video a thumbs up. If you appreciate my willingness to attempt things for the first time on camera, even thinking that they could fail spectacularly, and there are some fail videos here on the channel, uh, go over and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. If you don't know, Patreon is a platform uh, that connects fans with content creators and allows the fans to support the content that they really enjoy on a monthly basis in exchange for perks. And for the Chemnitz Patreon, those perks include early access to a new yarn dyeing video each month. Some rewards include behind the scenes sneak peeks, uh, Etsy coupons, and even shout outs in videos. You can find a link to the Patreon in the video description and iCard. I am tempted to try for a cool mordant technique in the future where I will layer all the fiber in a pot and let it sit for a couple days. I honestly think that this would be easier to plan for and manage than waiting for something to cool down or to heat up for a long time outside. That being said, I love the opportunity to go out on my driveway and play around with color. And I really hope that you enjoyed it too. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.